Good evening, and welcome. Tonight, we're going to be going over the history and geography of Ireland. A couple things before we get started. First of all, I'm so excited to do Ireland. Um, I am part Irish, as like almost all Americans are, so it is really exciting. So, I might ramble or go too fast or um, get really loud by accident because I'm talking about Irish history. So, um, my apologies if I mess up, I guess, or run through something so fast because when I'm talking about something I love, I get really excited and just <laughs> I have a hard time picking the right words, I guess, because I'm just like so excited to talk about it. Second of all, I did not intend for this video to come out on St. Patrick's Day. It's amazing that it did. Um, I wrote up the list of countries, the orders I wanted to go in, in July of last year. It's now March, obviously. So, um, I didn't plan for this. Um, I knew eventually something like this had to happen. I've done a few countries where, like, one of their biggest holidays was happening like a week before or after I was doing a video on them and I thought like, oh darn, if only I'd planned this out a little better, I could have had it fall on a holiday and I thought, well, someday I'll get a country where their video will fall on a holiday and here we are. So, I'm all decked out, as you can tell. I've got my Emerald Isle candle burning. I usually have a candle burning in the corner because it gets really cold in here at night and my fingers feel like ice, so... I just hold my hands over my candle to get warm. So of course I chose this one tonight. And yeah, and then just channel stuff. Um, I started a new Instagram, so check me out there. It's the same as my channel name, ASMR Geographica. And um, hello to all new subscribers out there. I'm edging closer and closer to a thousand. I'm very excited. So um, if you're new here, Feel free to sub, because I've got some really cool Ireland-themed videos coming out. See, that's what I'm talking about. I'm going to get so excited, I'm just going to start rushing through and stumbling over my words. I have some Ireland-themed videos coming out for the rest of this week. And then, um, yeah, I'm glancing over my calendar. I'm doing four countries next week. Two are in Africa, one's in Europe, one's in Asia, so... Yeah, lots of geography and history happening here on the channel, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Without further ado, let's just hop right in. I've got my pencil. Let's get into it. So, Ireland's most famous feature out of all of its beautiful features is, of course, its greenery. It is such a green, beautiful place. Pretty much all of this area where my hand is going is pretty flat. And very, very green. And the reason that Ireland is so green and flat and why it's an island is mainly due to um, the fact that it was once covered in like ice and glaciers for a very long time all throughout the Ice Age, so that really shaped its landscape in a big way. Um, let's see, Ireland is mainly consisted of four different regions. We have over here Leinster, over here is Munster, then we have Connaught, and Ulster is up here. And you'll notice most of Ulster is Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom. So once I get to the United Kingdom in my country series, we'll talk about Northern Ireland. Tonight we're just going to discuss the Republic of Ireland. It is pretty confusing because the entire island is named Ireland and this country is also named Ireland, but not all of Ireland is Ireland. So tonight we're doing the Republic of Ireland. So yeah, we'll talk more about Northern Ireland and its history, of course. Um, the capital city is right here, Dublin. Very large city, we'll talk about that, of course, and its history as well. Its highest point is right down here, in a range that's called McGillicuddy's Reeks. Let me see, I'm trying to find the exact spot right there. It's called Carintuel. 
I'm pretty sure. Like always, if you know Irish better than me or you're from Ireland and I mispronounce something, please correct me in the comments because, yeah, I, I don't like mispronouncing things. I always do my best on this channel. So that's the highest point. It's not a mountain like how you think of like mountains, right? Um, they're big, but not gigantic. Um, all along the coast here, down here and up here, we do have lots of mountain ranges, lots of big craggy peaks up here as well. The center is very flat and is full of bogs. So a bog is um, a type of like a muddy soil that forms something called peat or peat moss. And um, it's thick enough to like walk on when it's hard enough. You can like make bricks out of it if you dry it. It's um, an interesting material. Uh, but the peat bogs are mainly famous in archaeology because they can preserve bodies very well. So a lot of times people will dig, and not a lot of times, I should say. Uh, sometimes when you dig in a bog in the peat, you might find a body from like 10,000 years ago that still has like fingernails and hair and skin and everything. It's really good at preserving bodies. So we know a lot about Ireland's ancient history because of its bogs and a few of its caves and what have you where we find artifacts. Um, this area over here is called the Burren. The Burren National Park is right there. It has a very different landscape than the rest of Ireland. It's a karst landscape. And I haven't really talked about karst on my channel before. We have touched on a lot of countries that have a lot of karst rocks and karst landscape. So it's a very like craggy kind of rock. And actually these islands over here are called the Aran Islands and they are 100% rock. There's no soil that is found naturally on these islands. It's all very, very rocky over here. Um, I am going to show you pictures. I do have a book. Um, the sad thing about doing this country on St. Patrick's Day is that my library had very few books on Ireland left. <laughs> so this book I'm going to read to you tomorrow, but I'll show you some pictures after I talk about its history. So I'll show you what this landscape looks like. Um, along with this part right here, the most famous part of the burn is called the Cliffs of Mohair, and they are cliffs that jut straight down into the sea. They're very beautiful, very tall. Reminds me of like the Cliffs of Despair from The Princess Bride. <laughs> um, another geographic feature of Ireland is of course its many lakes and rivers. It has tons of them, and I would go on forever and ever all night talking about it if I listed them all. So. The most important river you need to know is its longest, the River Shannon, which comes down through here, over here, right past Limerick, and out here into the mouths of the Shannon, out into the Atlantic Ocean. You can also see down here, there's the Celtic Sea, the Irish Sea, separating Northern Ireland and Ireland from Scotland appears the North Channel, and separating Ireland from Wales, which you can't see in frame, it is right there, is the St. George's Channel right here. Um, yeah, lots of waterways in Ireland, plenty of them. Um, oh, another island is um, Valencia Island, which is right, I lost it right here. Um, its most famous feature is that um, once, like, telegraph cables were invented, um, a ship ran a cable under the ocean from this island to Canada, I want to say Nova Scotia, I'm not positive on that, but it was a telegram link for North America to Europe, and it was how the two sides of the world could communicate like they never had before, so that was its big claim to fame. Another famous site would, of course, be Blarney which blah, 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 Blarney, Blarney's right there, <laughs> which is the home of the Blarney Stone, which is like a big thing tourists do. You kiss the Blarney Stone to get um, a silver tongue, I suppose, the gift of the gab. You learn how to speak eloquently after kissing the Blarney Stone. 
Um, also, on a more like druid pagan level, which is more of my zone, we have up here in County Meath, the Hill of Tara, you see right there. Very sacred site, um, home of the fairies, it's where the ancient Irish kings were crowned. And then it's not marked on here, but it's right about here on the River Boyne would be Newgrange, which is a Neolithic monument, a tomb, a shrine, another home of the gods, the Tuatha de Danann. Um, it's one of those ancient monuments that um, aligns with the winter solstice. So it is a big mound with the chamber inside and the rising sun shines perfectly inside and lights it all up. Uh, really cool. And super old. I think it was made some like 5,000 years before the pyramids in Egypt. It's, it's an oldie. <laughs> if you know me, you know that I love my ancient sites and stone circles and things like that. The ancient peoples of Ireland are also all about that. So, um, before I start rambling even more, let's just get right into the history. Um, like I said, the island was covered in ice until about the year 10,000 BCE. The first signs we see of human life were in 10,500 BCE. Um, from what we can find archaeologically, uh, farming began around 4350 BCE. And the Bronze Age began on the island in about 2500 BCE. The Bronze Age meaning that they started creating tools, using the wheel, and other simple inventions like that. And then the Celts arrived. So the Celts were peoples from Europe. They came from what is now France, what is now Germany, what is now Spain. So basically like Gaul, it was known as back then. Um, also from Great Britain, of course, from the British Isles along here. They settled into the land and their culture really took off here, <laughs> particularly their language, their religion, their customs, their holidays, all of the above, you know. And we don't really know a lot about them because they didn't have a written language. All that we know about them is what we know from the Roman accounts. And even then, we're not quite sure when Roman contact began, even if at all. Um, well, I suppose um, Julius Caesar very famously visited the Isles up here, but... Um, Roman coins haven't been found, um, there's lots of Roman, um, geography books that mention the island, um, Ptolemy most famously wrote one, um, so literally all that we know about ancient Ireland comes from the Romans and what little archaeological evidence we can find. We know nothing else about them. We know very, very little about their ancient culture, their customs completely changed once again in about the 430s CE when two men came that changed Ireland forever. One was Bishop Palladius and the other, not long after him, was known as St. Patrick. Both of them, most famously St. Patrick, um, brought Christianity to Ireland. It was already here to some extent, but it really took off after they came and one way or another got the people to convert to Christianity, but once it settled in, um, Christianity thrived on the island. And it's very interesting because in mainland Europe, down here, um, you know, there were lots of turmoil. You know, the Western Roman Empire was falling apart. Um, various barbarian tribes would take over and ruin everything. Lots of power grabs from kings, Charlemagne going through and changing everything. All of that turmoil, but that didn't really happen up here. Ireland was very isolated in terms of culture and religion, and it sort of took off and became its own thing. Irish Catholicism in particular um, is pretty different from Catholicism around the world. It's a lot more like, I want to describe it as like beautiful, honestly. Uh, the Book of Kells being the most famous example of an um, ancient Irish religious text where every page of this book of, I think it's like hymns and what have you, are intricately, beautifully illustrated. Um, you know, they developed their own Irish cross, 
um, their own Irish architecture. There's a picture actually I'm looking at the book <laughs> of an Irish cross. Um, yeah, their their own brand of Catholicism, which compared to um, the Catholicism happening down in Europe or even like the Orthodox Christianity that was taking off at the time over in the East and in Asia, um, it was much more about, I want to say, like, I, I, the only word I can think of is like beauty and peace and yeah, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, a lot of priests came from Ireland to Europe to sort of preach their own version of Catholicism, which is also really popular at the time. Um, and then everything changed again when the Vikings invaded in the 9th century. They, the plundering finally came to Ireland. Um, the Vikings sacked a lot of towns and established their own, most famously what is now Dublin, was started by Vikings. Um, Waterford, Cork, um, what else? I want to say Limerick, yeah, Limerick also. I'm just like looking through all the cities. Um, but yeah, lots of places started off as Viking villages. Wexford, you know, all the main ones along the coast, I suppose. And then, um, everything changed again on May 1st, 1169. So there was a king of Leinster. No, his name was Dermot McMurrah, and his lands were being taken over by rivaling kingdoms, so he decided to ask for help. He went to the Normans, who had conquered um, what is now England and some of France. He went to them to ask for help, to ask for an army to come and get his land back. And the man who answered the call and brought his little army was named Richard de Clare. Uh, who was more commonly known as Strongbow, which is because he was an archer, right? He went in, and it was the first official, like, British invasion of Ireland. Not long after that, the king of the Norman slash England, Henry II, came in 1171, mostly just to supervise and make sure everything was going well, and then realized, oh, I can just claim this land in my name. And the lands that the Normans conquered, it was mainly along the coast here. They didn't get the whole island at this time. Came under British control. Um, it was pretty strong at first. They imposed lots of taxes and um, employed a basic serfdom among the people here. But as the years went on, it sort of went into a decline. You know, Britain had a lot of bigger fish to fry than um, ruling over the people of Ireland. Um, pretty much after, like I want to, like by the 1400s, there was barely any British influence in Ireland whatsoever. It was completely an Irish population. But that changed in 1542 when Henry VIII named himself King of Ireland. He basically stated, you know, we still have property in this land, and me being Henry VIII, you know, obsessed with conquering things, I'm going to conquer Ireland. And it led to a lot of wars, like, a lot of wars. <laughs> Ireland, of course, fought back against the British trying to take over, failed at that. Um, they were forced to be involved in the civil war that happened in Britain. And, of course, they <laughs> suffered because of that. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things I just have to put kind of bluntly, but peacefully and calmly, because this is an ASMR channel, but times were pretty bad in Ireland around this time. Uh, the British, um, in so many words, just kind of saw the people of Ireland as an afterthought and just kind of, you know, would give them the bare bones when it came to um, any kind of economic wealth, especially because of their religion. So the big to-do was because Henry VIII was a Protestant, right? Meaning that he disagreed with the Pope in Rome because he wanted to divorce his wife. And Ireland was, of course, very, very Catholic, and they did not want their king or the people ruling over them to not be Catholic, especially when that's so against Catholicism. So that was the main issue. 
didn't help when Britain started imposing laws about land ownership in Ireland. Basically that like if you were Catholic you could not own land. Um, you couldn't inherit your father's land if you were like the oldest son. If you were Catholic you had to be Protestant. Um, and people started losing ownership of their land. And what really didn't help was a particularly cold winter in 1740 that froze all the food in their storage and led to a massive famine. So it was just a very bad time. Many Irish rose up and fought against the British one way or another, either through voting or through protests or through violence. And Britain decided to nip that in the bud on January 1st, 1801, when they officially changed their name to the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, forcing the island the entire island to become part of Great Britain, which of course most of the Irish weren't too fond of. But um, Protestantism was becoming um, a way of life in parts of Ireland, in particular up here in the north, which kind of makes sense why there's Northern Ireland and Ireland, right? We'll get to it. Um, it all really came to a head in 1845 when the Great Famine began, and that's like a very famous part of history. It's the one thing that like everyone knows about Ireland is the potato famine. So of course people were very poor as it was. They had very small plots of land they could own, all that they could really afford to grow was potatoes because that's all that they really had space for. When a potato blight came to the region and killed their potatoes, a widespread famine occurred, disease spread, um, millions of people left, millions of people perished from the famine. Britain provided very, very little aid, really, if at all, to some communities. It lasted until about 1851. It was just a very bleak time for the Irish. So, of course, once the people of Ireland, what was left of them, were getting back onto their feet, they wanted change, as they always had. Um, political parties formed that were anti-British, pushing for independence. Many reformers came out and spoke out and led protests and riots, the most famous being Daniel O'Connell. He's pretty much known as the father of Ireland, like the Republic of Ireland. Um, there was a big push for new legislation over land rights and independence. Many laws went to the Parliament, which was, of course, controlled by the British. Um, many of them were vetoed over and over again until finally one passed in 1914 that would recognize Ireland as its own governing body. But that was all delayed because World War I happened, and Britain, of course, once again had bigger fish to fry at that time, which people were not happy about. Most famously in 1916, the Easter Rising occurred, which was an armed insurrection. They um, drafted a Declaration of Independence not long after that, um, on April 24th of that year. Um, but it was squashed by the British, as pretty much every Irish uprising had been at, <laughs> up until now. Um, that declaration was reinstated in 1919. Um, they formed a new parliament, which is still in control of Ireland, the Republic of Ireland today. And in 1922, the Irish Free State was born. Um, it was still under the thumb of Great Britain, but it was a totally self-governing government that ran Ireland. Um, the government gave the Protestant counties up here a choice if they wanted to become part of Ireland or go with Great Britain. And after like a month of the forming of the Free State, they decided to rejoin Great Britain which led to a lot more violence. I always try to put, you know, horrible things very delicately. But the Irish Civil War occurred from 1922 to 1923. Most famously, it saw the formation of the Irish Republican Army, or the IRA, who fought back against British control with a lot of violence, especially, well, we'll get to it. Um, you know, they were very much against um, a part of Ireland being part of Britain. Any Catholics in Northern Ireland did not want to be part of Britain, but they were forced to be. 
Protestants just wanted to be left alone. It was a whole to do, but uh, once again, the British came in and squashed it. The Irish government got to work in trying to help out their very poor nation. They drafted a new constitution in 1937, which got rid of the title of governor general and created a president. They declared themselves a republic in 1949, thus creating what is now the Republic of Ireland. And a couple decades after that in the 1960s was when the troubles began. So it was a reemergence of Irish nationalism up here on the border of Northern Ireland. People opposed to um, the British control up here. It all came to a head on what is known as Bloody Sunday when the British fired on Irish protesters, just regular people, you know. The IRA had a resurgence and they came back violently in what was basically terrorism. I mean, it was terrorism. And it was a rough time to be in Ireland. But that all ended with the Good Friday Agreement in 1998, for the most part, I should say, which establishes the current borders of Northern Ireland. And it wasn't long after this in the 1990s that the Celtic Tiger period began. So, as mentioned in my South Korea video, the Asian Tigers um, were countries in Asia that picked themselves up from basically poverty and became like economic powerhouses. That's what happened in Ireland from the 1990s until about 2008. Um, yeah, the Celtic Tiger came to life and Ireland um, developed an industry. Ireland doesn't have a lot of the natural resources like mining and what have you that other countries have had to allow themselves to develop. So Ireland does a lot of like software and electronic development, lots of chemicals and pharmaceutical companies, things like that, things that don't rely on the natural resource of the land. Um, they offered a lot of countries to move their European headquarters to Ireland for, you know, cheap land. They did boost the economy, makes everyone happy. And um, I say 2008 is when it ended because that's when the economic crisis happened worldwide that kind of brought Ireland's progress to a screeching halt. But basically, Ireland is one of the biggest economies in the world. They're doing very well economically, politically, um, and you know, it's 2021, 2020 just ended. That was a rough time for everyone in the world. Ireland was no exception. But you know, one of the main themes of Ireland is that um, when times are bad, good times are coming right along. And that no matter what, um, you know, the Irish always prevail. No matter how many times they're beaten down, you get knocked down, but you get up again. They're never gonna knock you down. I need to stop. Let's look through the book. I'm not gonna start singing Irish songs. I love Irish music. Oh my gosh, the chorus is one of my favorite bands. All time, like love the chorus. Love you too. The band you too, not you too. You too, the band. <laughs> Here's what I mean when we say that Ireland's very green. It's the Emerald Isle. Very beautiful. Here's like a physical map of Ireland. We won't go through this in my video tomorrow, but you can see Leinster, Munster, Connacht, and it's not listed here, but there's Ulster in this area up here. You can see all the mountains along here of the peninsulas and islands. The Kunmar I didn't really talk about. There's a car outside. Apologize for that. Um, it's a really interesting landscape, but I'll talk about that tomorrow. We have the mountains down here, the Gilakadis Reeks, which is the best name for a mountain range in my opinion. You can see all the rivers and even the railways coming out of Dublin, River Shannon. It's a great place. This beautiful green Ireland with the lovely rainbow, one of the many symbols of Ireland. These are the cliffs of Mohair. Isn't that majestic? Oh, it's a sight. It's very beautiful. Here are some bogs. This guy's making some boggy bricks, it looks like. It was the main source of fuel in Ireland for a long time. Here's what the Aran Islands look like. Very, very rocky. As you can see, this is the beach here. There's like no beach, it's just rocks. 
and this is Valencia, very green and beautiful. And this is a wharf in cork, so the car outside being loud, I do apologize. I love this picture, the little cow. <laughs> This is um, Kunmara, one of the bogs there. Very boggy lake. It says me right there, boggy lake. Here is another picture of the Kunmara and the ponies there. Ireland's very famous for its horses. Um, let's see what else. I want to show you mostly pictures of the trilogy maybe now. The Salmon of Knowledge. Maybe we'll talk about that in my... Uh, I won't spoil it in a video coming up much later. And here are the Aran Islands again, the remnants of an old fortress up there. And I think that's all I really want to show you, really picture-wise. Let me see if there's anything else. There's a really zoomed-in picture of Newgrange and the Celtic Cross. That's where the light comes through on the winter solstice. And, oh, here's a picture of the Book of Kells. There's St. Matthew, it says. It's gorgeous. They made a whole movie about the Book of Kells. Um, I wasn't really a big fan of it, but it is a gorgeous movie. Beautiful animation. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, the rest is just mostly about culture. Irish music, Irish food, what have you. So, like I said, I'll read this book to you tomorrow, so be sure to check that out. And I suppose that's it for basic history of Ireland and its geography as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope you have a very good St. Patrick's Day tonight. Be safe in more ways than one. Don't forget to social distance and wear your mask. And drink responsibly. And I hope you have a very good, 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 good,